So today we're going to be talking about the L of TULIP, which is limited atonement. And this can be one of the most controversial of the doctrines of grace, the limited atonement. But we're going to get right into it. Dr. James Anderson says, Christ's atonement was intended by God to secure the redemption of the elect alone. As we're wondering what exactly is limited atonement, it's the idea that Christ came to save his elect and he died for them and for them alone, limited in his atonement. For the sake of brevity, we're going, only going to be talking about the main basic points of this doctrine and where it's found in the scripture. I won't get too much into those arguments against it. Maybe we'll save that for another time. As we dig deeper into this subject in this video, I'm going to be looking at a lot of Dr. Anderson's work on this subject. When we look to the words of Jesus, we'll never hear him saying things like, I am the good shepherd. I lay my life down for every person who ever lived. We'll never hear him say such things as, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for everybody in the entire world who ever existed. We just won't hear him say things like that. We won't hear him say things like, as the Father knows me, so I know him, and I lay my life down for every individual ever. No, Jesus' statements about who he died for are very specific of who his intention was to give himself up on the cross for. And it is for his people. It is for his beloved. It is for the church. Jesus did say this, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. This is from John 10, in verse 11 and 15, and Jesus goes on to say there, As the Father knows me, I am known of the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. As we look in John 17, and we see how Jesus prayed, we won't find him praying things like, Father, I pray that the whole world may behold my glory the way that I beheld your glory. We won't hear him saying things or praying things like, where I am, I pray that the whole entire world would be also. No, Jesus in his prayer in John 17 also had a very particular people in mind of who he was going to atone for on the cross. And here's where we talk about a limited atonement. We have a particular people that Jesus is praying for there. It is limited in who his intention was to save and redeem. It is very particular. Jesus prays for the ones that God gave him and prays that they would be saved and those alone. So there is a sense that Jesus died for the world, but he died not for the entire whole world. He didn't, he didn't bring everyone to heaven. This isn't a universal atonement. We don't believe in universalism that automatically everybody goes to heaven. No matter what side, if you're a Calvinist or a man, you believe that someone must have faith in the gospel and believe and have a personal trust in what Jesus has done. And what I'm saying is that the limit that we put on this is that Jesus, his intention was never to atone for the entire world or else the whole world would, would be saved. His intention was to die and to atone for the sins of his people, for the ones that the Father gave to him. If we have the intent of Jesus dying for his people, our second point leads us to that the extent of the atonement was not for the entire world, or the entire human race, but the extent of the atonement was for the people of God, the elect. The atonement was limited in intent, but was not limited in efficacy. This is what I love about this doctrine, is that when Christ says, I have come to redeem my people, he really redeems his people. When Moses came to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, Moses really came and really redeemed his people out of bondage. There weren't a bunch of ones out there that didn't make it over through the Jordan River. They all came out of their bondage of the grip of Pharaoh from Egypt. They all were saved. The ones that Moses came to save. In the same way, Jesus died and shed his blood and he really has saved and really redeems those he came for. I'm going to read a quote from Charles Spurgeon. He says, Now, beloved, when you hear anyone laughing or jeering at a limited atonement, you may tell him this. General atonement is like a great wide bridge with only half an arc. It does not go across the stream. It only professes to go halfway. It does not secure the salvation of anybody. And I rather put my foot upon a bridge as narrow as Hungerford, which went all the way across, than on a bridge that was as wide as the world if it did not go all the way across the stream. So Spurgeon is talking there about an atonement that actually goes across, that actually 
fulfills and succeeds in its purpose. Jesus didn't die needlessly for anybody. What he came to do on the cross, he accomplished full victory on the cross for those he came to save. There's nobody there that God would said, man, I wish I could have just saved them. I wish I could have awakened them from their slumber and death, but, but I couldn't. There's never a time where Jesus is there on the cross thinking, there's so many other people that I want to die for right now. There's so many other people that I wish I had the power or ability to speak life into, but, but I can't. Their, their will is too strong. That's not what we find in the scriptures. And that's not the God that we see in the Bible. We have a God who is mighty to save and who saves all he has chosen to save. And all who come to him in faith will be saved and are chosen from the foundations of the world. And I'm kind of stealing my own points here, going a little bit ahead. But our third point is that Christ was actually victorious on the cross. He actually did accomplish what he intended to on the cross. So if Christ just died potentially for some people or made salvation available or possible to the world, but yet we know there are a whole lot of people who don't believe in Christ, then it would seem that it makes Christ to be a loser in that scenario where he really wanted to do something, he really wanted to save everybody, but he just couldn't. His blood wasn't sufficient. It wasn't, it wasn't enough to save those he wanted to. And I'm saying that's not what the Bible teaches. I believe that the scriptures teach that Jesus came victorious on the cross and died and shed his blood to save those he intended to, and he will not lose one. He says that in John 17, that there's not one that the Father gave him that he will lose. He will take all to glory. In conclusion, what does limited atonement mean? Or another way we could say it is particular redemption. There's a particular people that Christ came to save. What does that do for us? What, how should that change our lives or affect us? So what? The first thing is that particular redemption gives us confidence in the finished work of Christ. We don't have to worry if Christ is going to save those he wanted to and it's as if his hands are tied and he can't do anything to save. No, he is mighty to save. The second thing is that particular redemption gives us assurance in God's particular care for us as individuals for our salvation that he thought about us on not only on the cross that did God think about us but even before the foundations of the world even before Adam sinned God thought about our salvation and had us in mind in his whole plan of salvation and the third thing that particular redemption means to us is that we know we have a savior who will actually save those he intends to. So as we proclaim this gospel to sinners, we know that we have a savior who doesn't just potentially maybe save them, that he will save sinners out of the world and give them new life. And the fourth and most powerful thing I think that particular redemption does for us is that it gives us the assurance that God's promises never fail, that God's redemptive purposes never fail. That God is a winner and not a loser. That God is victorious. He is not defeated. His purposes in salvation will be accomplished and have been on the cross of Calvary. So if that was a blessing to you this morning, share it with a friend and make sure that you follow Park Road Church on YouTube on the channel there to make sure you're getting all the videos that we put out uh, to bless you and encourage you.